Hey all, here are OS Reviews. A couple weeks back, we did a revisited review of the Pixelbook here in 2022. It was a flagship Chromebook, was an official Google product, and was super expensive at the time, but the price is now around 200 bucks or so. It also represented pretty much flagship grade specs as far as Chromebooks are concerned, including 8 gigs of RAM, up to an Intel Core i7 processor, and still holds up very well in terms of performance as we saw. But in today's video, we'll be doing another revisited throwback review, but this time looking at a Chromebook from a similar time, in fact also released in 2017, but was more of a mid-range option and see how it's held up today. So the model specifically is going to be the Samsung Chromebook Pro, and as a bit of a recap, Samsung had released two models of these Chromebooks back in late 2017. There was the Chromebook Plus, which externally looks almost identical to the Chromebook Pro, has the same hinge, 360 degrees, has the exact same display, which is 2K resolution one of the sharpest on any Chromebook even today, and actually matches the Pixelbook in terms of the quality, also has support for the stylus or the S Pen really, that is found on both the Pro and the Plus variants. The only differentiator that you can tell visually is the Plus version has a silver keyboard, it was a little bit more popular versus the Pro which is all black. The Pro also sold for about $50 more, and the reason is because of the processor. This one is rocking a Intel Core M M3 processor. It's the 6Y30, also very popular on other Ultrabooks, including the Xiaomi Mi Book 12 that we also reviewed a while back. So it's a fanless computer, of course, versus the Plus has a slightly less powerful ARM-based processor. In any case, the Pro will definitely be a slight step up compared to most budget Chromebooks, which are rocking Celerons and are just a bit slower in terms of day-to-day -day usage versus the M3, which is just a slightly lighter version of a Core i3 chip, is very similar to the Pixelbook in the sense that it is using a 4x3 aspect ratio screen, which is why it looks so square or boxy rather than widescreen. So similar to an iPad, it's going to be pretty good for reading back articles, uh, web pages, as well as for ebook reading and note taking, but in terms of watching back videos, there will be a bit more of a black bar. Now what's also unique about Samsung Chromebooks is the, again, addition of the S Pen, which is integrated on the side, just like on Galaxy Note smartphones. Now, the Pixelbook does also support a stylus, but like other models, they can't be really stored inside the laptop, so you have to take it separately. It's just a little easier to lose. So even though at the time this retailed for 550 bucks, which was already around half the price of the Pixelbook, in today's standards, if you're finding one on Amazon or eBay, it'll easily sell for under 120 bucks. So it's still about half the price, in fact, of a used Pixelbook. But the gap in terms of what you're actually spending is definitely much less than it used to be. Uh, less than $100 difference between the two is not quite as significant as, say, $500 from back in the day. So when you look at it like that, I would almost say immediately right off the bat that the Pixelbook should probably be a slightly stronger contender if you are looking at pure specs because again for less than $100 more you're basically getting 8 gigs of RAM versus 4 on here and still a faster processor by comparison again an i5 or an i7 uh, but with that being said again if you can find one of these at a affordable price sometimes even less than $100 it can still be very much worthwhile Especially, say, if you're comparing it with a used Windows computer, or if you're looking at even an Android tablet, models which are rocking similar performance in terms of the processing power and 4 gigs of RAM, you'll often find priced higher than what you have to pay now for a Chromebook like this. The Chromebook Pro, even though it's not quite as solid as a Pixelbook, it still is constructed out of aluminum alloy for the shell. It still is quite premium in terms of the way that it looks, and for the most part, how it handles. The side here features the USB Type-C port, which is for power as well as data, and it also supports video out. And similar to the Pixelbook, you get two of these Type-C ports, uh, but that is pretty much it. There is no full-size USB Type-A port because this thing is so slim, but that can be a little bit inconvenient in the case that you want to plug in an external mouse or, again, an HDMI cable. You can have to use an adapter to do that. There's also a volume rocker and a power key, which are all made out of metal and feel pretty tactile and responsive. And then located on the right-hand spine is that aforementioned S Pen, which is 
actually very similar to what you'll find on the Galaxy Note smartphones. In fact, in my testing, they have been compatible with one another. It's using Wacom technology and gets you over 4,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. Other side, we have just a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack along with a micro SD card slot for expanding the memory, which by default, it comes with 32 gigs of storage. So also not quite as much as the 128 on the Pixelbook, a little bit better than 16 gigs, which came by default on a lot of other budget Chromebooks from the day. Ultimately, you're gonna have to rely on that micro SD card or cloud storage if you wanna do it more local files and media storage. But considering this thing should be primarily used for web browsing and some online apps, I would say it should get you by. The back here also houses the stereo speakers and some soft touch rubber feet. Material here is once again made out of metal, so it's cold and reassuring to the touch. One thing I will say though is the placement of the rear facing speakers isn't the most ideal. It's fine if you're putting it onto a table, but if you're say working on a sofa or bed, it can be a little easier to cover up. With that being said, it still is a pretty beautiful piece of hardware with all these rounded edges, and it still is undeniably very slim as far as laptops even today are concerned. It's super lightweight, and it's just easy to take around and still looks quite classy. Now again, flipping things open, we have access to that beautiful 12.3 inch 4x3 aspect ratio display, which is par on par with the Pixelbook. Quad HD resolution is super sharp. It's protected by Corning Gorilla Glass as far as touch sensitivity, very responsive, gets plenty bright, and has wide viewing angles. So it's one area where this Chromebook still has held up very well. Down below there we have the keyboard, which is a little more controversial. For one, because of the 4x3 aspect ratio instead of the widescreen form factor, it's just a little bit more cramped in terms of the layout. Some of the keys, including the backspace and delete, they're just a little bit more shortened than normal, so it just takes a little bit of time to get used to. One thing that you will also see about this keyboard is it doesn't come with a backlight, at least on the original variant. Samsung did release a version 2 of the Chromebook Pro, but it was a silent release without much splash in terms of press or publicity, and they added a backlit keyboard onto that model. However, if you're shopping around online, it can be pretty tough to delineate between the two. Otherwise, down below here we have the trackpad, which is made out of a polycarbonate plastic. I do have a screen protector, which is matte, but overall it's fine. It's clicky enough and pretty responsive to use with multi-touch, but it definitely isn't quite as good as the Pixelbook, which is is using a glass trackpad. It just feels a little smoother. Moving into UI and performance, overall I have to say that this Chromebook has held up quite well. Similar to the Pixelbook, I would say the difference of the Core M3 versus a Celeron is noticeable, especially as web pages and content has become more demanding over time. That two to three years ago, even on a budget Chromebook, things still felt really fast and swift as far as browsing the web, even with five to 10 tabs. But these days, that's just not the case anymore. So now having an Intel Core M3, more powerful hardware, which was once ridiculed on something like a Chromebook, is now becoming more, I think, normalized. Here is a quick demo of that stylus in action. So I'm gonna pop out the S Pen, and you can see this prompt just pop up that tells us we can create a screen capture, we can create a note, which will just open up our preferred note-taking tool. So I can say something like, hello world, and you can see how everything is working quite nicely in terms of lag or latency. It really is super hard to observe. Google has been working quite hard in terms of making optimization of stuff just improved uh, in terms of the responsiveness, and I think it definitely shows. So like I said, if you are certain that you are going to be using the stylus for things like handwriting as well as note taking, and you do prefer using kind of that pen and paper experience to do things like that, I do think that's one area where the uh, Samsung Chromebook Pro will have a bit of an advantage. I can also flip the orientation to go into, let's say, a tent mode. Uh, if I want to further use this thing for, uh, again, watching back videos, it gives you that versatility, just like the Pixelbook with that yoga-inspired 360 hinge. And overall, things are working quite well. Of course, we do also get the virtual keyboard. Other applications of that stylus can include using screen capture. So if you want to do that, you can create either a partial or a full-size screen capture, which is actually pretty handy. Laser pointer, so if you're giving a presentation when you link this up to a monitor or using Chromecast, you are able to kind of use the cursor to navigate and highlight things on a slideshow, which can be pretty handy. There's also the ability to try out a magnifying glass, which also uses the stylus to, again, make a spot of the region a little bit larger and easier to see. 
With that being said, just like on the Pixelbook, one potential risk of picking up a older Chromebook is the support. Namely, with this particular model, we can see that Samsung has promised software support uh, up until June of 2023 for the Chromebook Pro, which means that there is just about a year or so left in terms of official software updates that you'll be getting for the OS, which like I said about the Pixelbook is a little bit disappointing because in terms of power and performance, this Chromebook can more than handle additional usage, uh, but it's just a little bit of planned obsolescence there in terms of not getting official updates anymore. And by the way, that duration is a little bit shorter than the Pixelbook, which by contrast, we can see uh, is slated to receive updates until June of 2024, so about one year of more support. But similar remarks remain in terms of the longevity of the unit in the sense that even though the support will technically stop, it doesn't mean that the device will automatically break. In fact, it still functions perfectly fine. Your web browsing will still work as expected, but it's just you won't get the newest software tricks anymore unless you do some manual updating yourself, which in a way, again, is still not as good as Windows OS, which tends to get you slightly better support uh, in that sense. Now, anyways, if we jump into some of the performance now, in terms of raw benchmarks, I don't think this is necessarily reflective of, uh, again, the real world usage, but Overall, we can see on Octane, we're getting around 21,000. That's versus the 30,000 that you'll typically get on the Pixelbook. Both metrics, though, are quite strong as far as Chromebook standards, and it translates into very fast and responsive real-world usage. Uh, this is a model where, just like on the Pixelbook, if you are coming from an entry-level Chromebook, you will definitely feel the difference in terms of speed and navigation. Launching complex web pages just feels super fast and speedy, so despite the fact that we technically get less RAM on here, personally, I've still been able to use about 10 tabs to 15 tabs, and things have still felt pretty responsive and fast. Uh, technically, maybe a little less than on the Pixelbook, which allows you to do even more multitasking, but as long as you aren't being super crazy, things are still loading up really quickly. So let's jump into a quick video test by launching into YouTube. Let's crank the resolution all the way up to, let's say, 4K, and turn on stats for nerds and see how it renders. Right, so lowering the volume there, some takeaways being that overall it's quite good. Of course, you will notice a little bit of drop frames, but again, this is a 4K resolution video, which is a little overkill because the screen is only 2K. Uh, so 2K is typically going to get you almost zero drop frames, unless you are hooking this thing up to an external monitor via 4K. But you can tell that overall, watching Ultra HD content is not a problem. There's no real lag between any of the animations, which is not the same that I can say about budget Chromebooks, which uh, if you were doing the same thing, especially with a 4K clip, it would just be a lot more slow and choppy at this point, but you can just tell how quickly the video starts to load and how fast it takes to switch into a full screen. As far as other areas of performance are concerned, pretty much it's like any other Chromebook in the sense that you don't really get uh, a lot of those native apps built on in, but you can leverage a lot of web apps, which these days is getting a lot better progressively, including alternatives such as online versions of PowerPoint from Office and Microsoft themselves, or using, of course, Google's equivalents, even in cases where you might be offline and don't have access to Wi-Fi, you can still technically install the Android version of the app. So although it may not be to the same extent, yes, as a Windows computer or Mac OS, that's also not really an issue because Google offers their remote desktop app and allows you to basically log into your Windows computer or Mac OS, which might be in a different room or even in a different location altogether. As long as that computer is turned on and connected to the web, you're able to also use this as a portal into that machine. Not to mention, just like we said before, Chrome OS these days does offer native Linux support as well. Now, as far as edge cases are concerned, of course, if you are doing serious, let's say, video editing, that's always going to be an area of weakness on any Chromebook. So unless you're using the remote desktop, that might be an area where you would probably look for another computer. But Chromebooks have always been more about casual computing. And again, if you're comfortable using it more like a tablet with a awesome web browser, again, other casual usage, whether it's running some Android apps, it's also perfectly serviceable. Of course, you will notice some moments of hesitation compared to a 
uh, let's say, flagship-grade Android tablet that is using a Snapdragon processor, because at the end of the day, this is still using a Intel chip and doing a bit of emulation. But there's nothing that you can't really run or access uh, on this device, just like on the Pixelbook. It still remains a pretty fun experience just for some casual gameplay. If you are playing more serious or heavier titles, I would recommend using something like Google Stadia for cloud gaming, and that also allows you to play AAA games since, again, it has a pretty good display and good internet connection. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, this is one area where, similar to the Pixelbook, I would say this is just so-so. Uh, really, that Quad HD display I do think is eating up more power than a average 1080p panel. So these days, I was able to use this thing for around, let's say, six hours of usage before I needed to reach for the charger. Luckily, it does top up very quickly in around an hour and a half. So that's more or less it as far as our revisited review of the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook Pro here in 2022. And overall, as far as answering the question of how does a mid-tier Chromebook feel uh, compared to a flagship and a budget Chromebook that we've seen previously, I would say, surprisingly, this is closer to that flagship experience than you would think. I would I would say that this is held up better than I was thinking in terms of the performance, the fluidity, and the overall user interface. It still is working quite well, I have to admit, uh, for the Samsung Chromebook Pro. So if you are kind of a Samsung fan, or if you do really need that integrated stylus support, there definitely still are reasons to consider something like this, which again, can now be found for around a hundred bucks and uh, makes it, I think, still worthwhile considering you are getting basically a pretty capable Android tablet combined with an excellent web browsing experience. You can check out more details if you're interested in the links below. For now, it's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.